Last night, good night last night, went out for a meal with uh, they'll set bird off of friends. Um, Jennifer Aniston. You know Jennifer Aniston? Stupid air like that. It's a nuisance you're eating with her and she's eating all the airs going in her paella and everything. Let's <laughs> keep doing that. Oi, just pull it away like that. But uh, very nice, but not very not very giving. Not a giving woman. Certainly when we got back here and went down to the back of my bedroom, not very giving. Right? <laughs> no, because you'd think so, right? Because our uncle was doing that all the time, wasn't he, with the lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't seem to be interested at all, to be quite honest. I'll tell you what I've got now, some fantastic stuff. Look at this. Imagine this, right? Imagine John McCreary keeps coming around your house and becomes a nuisance, right? No worries. Just get a little bit of this stuff and splash it on him, and that'll get rid of him. Look, that's a special thing there for getting rid of, look, gamblers. <laughs> right, and also, my mate Solomon, smashing fella, nice bloke, but <laughs> round here all the time. And he's just got married. Now, between me and you, I don't think it's working, because he's round here all the time. Can I come stay around your house? Can I come... All I'll do, spray him with that. There you go. That'll get rid of him. <laughs> See how it works? Simple as that. Simple as that. And sometimes Vanessa comes round. Vanessa Feltz, and if you same thing, you don't want to just here, just whack a little bit of that on, I'll get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. She's a lovely woman. She's she's like a mother to me. <laughs> so like several mothers, actually. <laughs> Here's something you can use. Like, imagine you've got friends come round, right? You've got mates come round, and they stay the night. So it sometimes happens. Sometimes my mate Jack Lord from Hawaii Five O, he come round. <laughs> He don't talk much, does he? <laughs> he don't smell that good either. <laughs> but anyway, if you do have celebrity friends, make sure you've always got that. Look at that, you see? Mates come around, always keep a toothbrush so they can brush their teeth the next morning. There you go. If they're Welsh people, that would be. I wonder they care about it. And also, for the same reason, always a selection of toothbrushes. Now, same as Mr. Richard Madeley was to come round. Well, there you go. That's the kind of thing he'd like. Look. Confidence. <laughs> He's a confident man, possessed, very well possessed of himself, and give him that. Look at that. Now, what about Richard Claderman if he was to come round? Well, you'd need that for him, look. Sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Never married. Very, very nice. <laughs> and if Carol Vorderman shows up, then that's the stuff for her. Look, there you go, that's for Carol. <laughs> Very, very bright girl. Now, what we got in here? What's my fan me, my one-legged Welsh woman got here? Let's have a look. They're down in the bowels of the kitchen, and she's got, well... That's a pair of socks, isn't it? Am I right? Am I wrong? That's a pair of socks. A pair of socks and a... My word, a picture of Jane Torville. The wonderful Miss Jane Torville, one of the leading ice skaters of the entire Western world. So, Jane Torville and a pair of socks. That's... Well, what have you come up with him? Oh, I see. Very funny. Yes, very rude girl you are, my family. Look at her, apparently. Boot socks. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. She's a very nice man. So is Christopher Dean. He never married, either. <laughs> Obviously, uh, very lucky to find me in, because normally I'd be um, out and about. Oh, I can't hang about. I'm going to see my mate Bamba Gascoigne, right? Who likes to flaunt it, to be honest. He's very nice over here. I'll see you later. Hello, right, Bamba! <laughs> yeah. Remember this program I made? Remember this program? It was called uh, Friday Now, right? For I thought the title Friday Now. Uh, it was on Thursdays. It's a bit of a pain. Really. No, it's Friday. It's just a bit of a joke. I do them every now and again. Not often, but I do. Uh, and this is uh, this is an excerpt from it, and it was. Uh, the woman who's going to be talking, right, she's talking about the, one of the finest investigative journalists of our age, Mr. Chris Searle. Sadly, we don't see enough of him. Too much Roger Cook, not enough Chris Searle, I find these days. But here he is with, with his checkout, a little bit of checkout stuff. Coming up in a minute. Hello again. This week, a handful of terrified passengers were trapped during a fire alert at Euston Tube Station. Passengers claimed that the barriers that take your ticket before letting you out were jammed. Well, fortunately, nobody was hurt. But the incident adds to concern about the safety of the new barriers. So Chris went underground this week. Trapped! <laughs> hey, no, it's a bit of a heavy thing, so watch. Have you seen this advert that's come out recently? It's from London Underground and it boasts about the new ticket barriers, the automatic ticket barriers. Now, in central London, 63 tube stations, there are no less than 700 of these barriers. Now, how good are they really? Well, I've been finding out. 
<laughs> London Underground claims that these new automatic ticket barriers are safe, easy to use, and more convenient. And they say passengers will soon get used to them. But many of those passengers don't agree. You see? And you think there isn't enough important stuff on television. <laughs> How safe are these barriers? Pretty safe, I think, Chris, isn't they? Well, no, hey, he's going to talk to someone now from the Capital Transport Campaign, which is obviously, as he says, it's a group of people who travel uh, in the capital, and it's a consumer's thing. And obviously, whoever's in charge of that, he'll be an upright citizen, won't he? He'll be a grown-up, probably a mature man in his 40s or 50s. <laughs> I wouldn't get some, like, 12-year-old student frightening up that campaign, <laughs> would I? That'd be ludicrous. And his case is being followed by the <laughs> <laughs> They say she isn't the only one to suffer problems. I think it's one of passengers' main concerns at the moment. These things are almost universally unpopular. <laughs> Chris is going to sort it out. He's there and he's going to conduct his own experiment. Just how safe are these things, all right? And please, it will be a genuine experiment. And his automatic barrier certainly seem to be a serious obstacle for some people. So, I've got some shopping bags. I'm going to try and find out just how difficult they can be to get through. Ticket. Um. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> just walk backwards, son. Take the ticket, walk backwards, come through again. No, I'm stuck. Help me. Help me. Help. <laughs> Here he goes, look. Again, this time with shopping and a push chair. Take it in the slot. Here we go. <clears throat> push chair goes through. The shopping goes through. And the... It's stuck. It's stuck. And that's free, and I'm stuck. No, I didn't... I didn't make that happen. It actually happened. <laughs> I didn't make that happen. It actually happened. <laughs> I'm actually jammed in here. Jammed I was. I did eventually manage to get free. What a shame. <laughs> what a terrible thing. You have to go home to your wife and children. What do you do today, Daddy? Uh, I got jammed in some barriers. <laughs> no, genuinely jammed. Did you, Daddy? Or did you just stand behind them and bang them and pretend you were jammed? <laughs> no one took him... Even then, they rolled on a, a London transport man, and they are notoriously hard-faced people. Very, uh, yes, well, I've got a very corporate line that I'm going to tow... Even he can't take him seriously, look. We think our system, our new system, is safer than the one it replaces by providing more evacuation capacity and better facilities for, for, for crowd control. We believe when it's uh, fully developed, it will be safer, therefore we do want to proceed and implement it. And yet people still get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, it's only you, you idiot. <laughs> Right, I've got something else now. I went over to the United States of America. Uh, I go over quite a lot. I go on Concord, right? <laughs> well, well, that's not funny. I do. I go on Concord. I've got a season ticket on Concord. <laughs> I shoot over in time a lot. I'll sit at the front with the driver, <laughs> or whatever they're called. Um, and I made this programme about one of the legends of rock and roll. I think there are three. I think most people are agreed. Uh, I know some of the younger people are into, you know, fun-loving criminals, Oasis, people like that. But <laughs> for me, there is, was, and only ever will be uh, important rock and roll people will be Buddy Holly, Carl Perkins, Elvis Presley, and uh, Hazel Adkins, obviously. <laughs> I'm sure you're all with me on that 100%. So I made a programme about the most important of those, uh, Hazel Adkins. <laughs> and uh, it starts off with uh, Jim Lovett. Let Jim Lovett explain. A lot of performers. Just before we go any further, you know the kind of people who do. Drinking buddy of Hazel's claims he's writing his biography. <laughs> you're either writing his biography or you're not. Or you're just sitting there drinking. <laughs> play music so that the audience hears it and they applaud they go home and they forget about the music they forget about the concert you know two or three days later that you know yeah it was a nice concert but they didn't hear it Hassel plays so that when you go home you remember it and you remember it for a long time to come okay here's uh, Hassel's big sister and she's uh, many things she's beautiful 
She's young. <laughs> She's also the most incomprehensible woman in the entire world. I've watched this particular uh, segment 40, 45 times. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. But maybe there's some, some of you grew up in the swamplands of Alabama and it might make sense. I was born in Seco, West Virginia, and Hassel Adkins is my baby brother. He started to beating on his guitar, his water back, or guitar. My daddy, he said, son, go out behind Chimney Corner and beat on that. Said, <laughs> So he goes to Chimney Corner and he beats and beats. That's where he's tracked. <laughs> and he listened to Hank Williams and Jimmy Rogers and all them legends. And he thought they were doing that themselves, which they was not, which he thought they was. See? <laughs> Got it? <laughs> he watched them on, he thought they was beating on him and doing themselves, which they was not. So he thought they was, which they was not, which he was. <laughs> Good God. How's it actually just an ordinary guy? Funny enough, for all this, hey, down, 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 boys kind of talk. Grew up in North London. <laughs> grew up in North London, grew up in the same street, funny and stuff as me, and he had exactly the same kind of upbringing, exactly the same kind of childhood as I had. He drove off a cliff at 100 miles an hour. He'd get girls in the car and back them into telephone poles and ram them and, you know, have sex in the middle of the road. Because uh, that's what was going on. That's life in Muswell Hill, basically. That's the way it goes. Now, the thing is about Hazel, there are two definitions. One of them is the right one, one of them is not. But there's a big argument. What is he? Is he one thing or is he the other? Hassel Atkins is, uh, depending on what your perspective is, a, a rockabilly hero, a cult favorite, or an alcoholic pest. <laughs> rockabilly hero or alcoholic pest? <laughs> it's up to you guys. Now then, what we got? Ah, right, well, here we go. This is some of Hassel's music. I just managed to film this, kind of, it was on his desk. These are his songs. Um, let me see if I remember how this one goes. Shall I do it? Shall I try and do it for you? Yeah. Right, let me see. I can't. Uh, well, I'll try. I'm gonna tell you what happened. I went out last night and I got hitched up. When I woke up this morning, see what I had in bed with me. Pulled his hair down, he jumped out of bed. Down in its eyes, looked at me like a dyed and can of commodity me. She said, she said, and then I think some strings come in and some backing singers. She said, yeah, yeah, when I went out last night. It's all kind of that. It's a little bit twee, I suppose, by today's standards. It's a little bit Beverly Sisters. I think, I th hang on, have we, I think we've actually got Hazel playing it. I think so. Let's have a look. Well, I gotta tell you what happened. <laughs> I went out last night, and I got his stuff. When I woke up, his body should have seen what I had to see. <laughs> he jumped up out of bed, pulled his hand down his eye, looked at me like a guy in Canada that come out on me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, that's obviously the other version of it. <laughs> Birthday, and his mate Maxi, right? He had this balloon, right, in the shape of a Power Ranger, and then his other mate, he got this even bigger balloon, right, in the uh, shape of the New Zeo Rangers. And my boy said, oh, "I want to go one better." So, fair enough. If that's what you want. I've sorted it out. Right, <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday on the front. Yeah, oh, you see his mate's faces then. Yeah, and I'll know. And that'll teach them to laugh. Yeah, just because I don't speak as well as their dad. <laughs> <laughs> Great. He cracks me up. He cracks me up. Stephen Fry. My mate Stephen Fry. He's so funny. He's got his new book out. It's, uh, it's, it's for grown-ups, but for, I think the kiddies would enjoy it as well. It's just the way... He's just such a funny man. He's, look, there's, his, see, there's his new book there, look. There you go. <laughs> and this is a book uh, that I've written... Well, not... Uh, I've helped, obviously. It's all about uh, holiday-making in Wales. 
<laughs> yeah, it's all about going on holiday in Wales, staying in the top hotels in Wales. There you go, that's nice there. That's lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> Yay! Yep. Now then, we're we'll back. We're back with my movie that I made about Hazel Adkins' movie. That's what they call films in the movie business. <laughs> <laughs> or is it what they call f movies in the film business? Whatever, don't matter. Uh, I'm digressing. Well, I'll tell you what we got. We've got Hazel's first ever appearance on uh, Top of the Pops. Fantastic. Here we go. Hazel, Fantastic. Such a big hit on that. You must remember a couple of years ago, by, by Royal Command, he appeared at the Palladium in the uh, Royal Variety Show. And uh, we said, look, it's a, it's a Royal Variety Show, Hazel. Don't just turn up like that in the T-shirt. Make a bit of an effort. All right? Uh, you've seen Elton John. You've seen... Just make a bit of an effort. And bless him, he came through. It looked beautiful and sounded, ah, oh, as good as he's ever sounded. Beautiful song. In fact, I think one or two of you will be welling up. Ready? Look here, mama. I'm going away, can you see? Yeah, mama. <laughs> I remember the Queen had pissed off by now. She, like, she said, I'm not having this. I'll sit through Barrymore, but I'm not having this. <laughs> uh, no, it's just for you, a little bit more. Go away, go away, can't you see? Everybody! <laughs> hey, I love you, mama. Big finish, Hazel. Blood, you know I love you. Just slightly dragging. That's it. Yes. Of course, sir. Yes. <laughs> Ta -da! Fantastic. Oh. Oh, Michael Jackson. I don't think so. Uh, anyway, here he is. Now, of course, he's famous for, for two things. His superb stage technique and also the dance that he came out. There have been some great dances. The locomotion, the twist, the shake, uh, the mashed potato, the woolly bully, the barefoot, but nothing quite like the hunch. <laughs> I'll do this thing. I get a lot of letters from fans all over the world. And they all want to know what the hunch is. Well, hunch is the dance. Okay. Go I think it's the best dance they ever had. I think it is. Out of all the dances they ever had, I think it's the best one. And everybody seemed to like it and everything, but nobody don't know what it is. Right. So what we did was we got together for the film, and we were very, very lucky uh, to get some of the finest dancers around. Uh, we got uh, Dee Dee off of Penn's People. She came down. <laughs> uh, Flick Colby from the original Penn's People. She, a couple of people from the younger generation. Unfortunately, he couldn't get uh, the, the leader of them because he was busy doing other things. Uh, but we got some really, really nice dancers. Oh, and the guy out of her, Debbie from Hot Gossip. And they put on a demonstration of the hunch, which is the, the dance that uh, Hazel invented. You love me, baby, I love you. Come on, put it baby, just put it in there. Shake it, thing. Shake it, thing. Shake it, thing. Burn it, thing. Let's take a picture of this. I'm on a big one. I'm on a great big one. Throw your partner out the door. Hey. Shake it, shake it, <laughs> there you go. I think it'd be a big hit in the clubs. I really do. I really do. Hey, I think the Ministry of Sound have got something to look forward to there, ladies and gentlemen. Just before we go, and we do have to go because the hands of the clock are tugging at my coattails. Before we do, I talk, I, we touched earlier on Prong called Friday Now with the excellent Pam Roy. Pam Roy, wasn't it? Was it Pam Roy? Yeah, with the excellent Pam Roy. Uh, it was my programme, so I'm responsible for everything that happened in it, all right? And I did say it was a 45-minute programme, and I came up with this idea, right? <laughs> I said, why don't we have, at the end of each show, because it's live, the 45-minute fact. These are, this is what's happened in the last 45 minutes, 
Okay. And I thought there'd be some interesting things, you know, they want, how many of a certain type of thing has happened in 45 minutes? All right, some ideas work, some ideas don't, all right? <laughs> During the last 45 minutes, 25 babies have been born in our region. Keep them coming. <laughs> Five minutes, 4,320 acres of rainforest have been destroyed. Fair enough. No, interest, isn't that? How on. many people have left the capital by mainline train in the last 45 minutes? <laughs> well, you may be surprised to learn that according to British Rail, it is on average a staggering 212,000 people. Worth knowing. Come on, come on. Good stuff. How many road traffic accidents there have been in the region in the last 45 minutes? Welcome. You see what I mean? It's the kind of thing that people need to know. And I said to her, so I said, Look, as long as it will work, as long as it's fluent, as long as it's just shoom, concise and fluent, it will work. How many eggs had been eaten in our region during the last <laughs> five minutes? Well, Ros, the answer would normally be 187,000. Uh, <laughs> oh, leave it. It's a stupid idea. See you later. Bob is. I haven't got a clue. I haven't seen him anywhere. Sue, can you hear me? Yeah? Do you know where Bob is? No, I haven't seen him. We really need to get on with this. We're wasting valuable studio time. Well, it's ridiculous. He's only got to open the bloody door. You see, and ah, and now I'm completely trapped, you see? The bowler hat goes through, and now and the body goes through, and now I'm completely trapped. Hello? Somebody help me, please. Hello? Hello? You see, I'm not put, putting this on. I'm genuinely trapped. <laughs> In the last 45 minutes, there have been no funny jokes at all. <laughs>